This is a nice chart that you can use as a cheat sheet because it summarizes all the different types of metabolisms that we find in all organisms, not just bacteria and archaea. So along the top here, there are the energy sources. And so that is where the organisms are going to get the driving factors for their main manufacture of ATP. So in photoautotrophs, for example, uh, they take in light and light drives the reactions that eventually end up producing ATP. And then the other possibility is to use chemicals to drive the reactions that manufacture ATP. And so chemoautotrophs would be these organisms that use uh, things like hydrogen and sulfur kind of in the, a similar way that plants and photosynthetic bacteria use light. Now along this side, along the y-axis here, we have the carbon sources and there are a number of different carbon sources that we can have. Why are carbon sources important? So why are we talking about that and not, you know, sources of nitrogen or phosphorus? Well, keep in mind that carbon is so crucial in making all biological molecules. So we need carbon for DNA. We need carbon for our amino acids and therefore our proteins. Oh, narrow proteins. So carbon is one of the main kind of concerns for an organism because it really can't do anything or make a single molecule if it doesn't have carbon. And th again, things like nitrogen and phosphorus are very important as well as oxygen, but organisms can make molecules without those elements. And, and you cannot make uh, any biological molecules without carbon. So carbon uh, sources are from either carbon dioxide or from organic compounds. And so these guys, the carbon dioxide um, users, are we use the prefix auto. So these are either photoautotrophs or chemoautotrophs, as we see here. And Again, these are organisms that take in carbon dioxide from their surroundings, from their, the atmosphere usually, and they will use that carbon and use those carbon atoms and incorporate them into molecules like glucose, for example. On the other hand, we have these heterotrophs, which use organic compounds as a carbon source. What do we mean by that? Well, to kind of put it um, in a colloquial sense, we get it from food, we get it from eating things. Heterotrophs are organisms like most animals or all animals, I guess, that consume other organisms or some sort of carbon containing compounds from other organisms, which provide them with these carbon atoms, which they can then incorporate into their glucose, into their DNA and, and amino acids, etc. So I really encourage you to take a close look at this chart and really go through and think about the different metabolic pathways that are being used in all of these different groups and how each is different from one another. And also I made a note on Blackboard that all four groups have bacteria, but the photoautotrophs and the chemoheterotrophs also contain organisms in addition to bacteria. I should say bacteria and archaea. So photoautotrophs and chemoheterotrophs also contain eukaryotes, eukaryotic organisms, as well as bacteria and archaea, whereas chemoautotrophs and photoheterotrophs these guys only have bacteria and archaea. Bacteria and archaea.